good morning one and all today i'm going to discuss the chapter operational of endodontics these are the contents we are going to discuss in this chapter coming to rational uh, what is rational it is a fundamental reason or rational basis for a procedure each and every procedure will have a particular reason to perform or to do the cardinal principle of any healthcare profession is the thorough understanding of disease etiology and pathogenesis which can provide a framework for effective treatment so here the rational for endodontic therapy is based on the belief that a natural tooth function it functions more efficiently and comfortably than a prosthesis so that's why a root canal treatment will has been performed since many years the endodontic therapy allows the removal of vital necrotic or vital or necrotic pulp from the canal system of an infected tooth and it is replaced by an inert filling material this is done mainly to prevent extension of the disease from the pulp into peripheral tissues coming to the theories of spread of infection these are just basic definitions of what is focal infection it is localized or general infection caused by dissemination of microorganisms or toxic products from a focus of infection and what is a focus of infection this refers to a circumscribed area of tissue which is infected with exogenous pathogenic microorganisms and is usually located near a mucus of cutaneous surface before we going in detail of the rational how does the pulp and periradicular tissues are reacting to injuries is that most important issue for us the injuries can be of different types physical injuries like uh, with a because of heat cold radiation mechanical trauma and chemical may be or from organic and inorganic poisons and bacterial may be from or due to streptococcus mutans lactobacilli actinomyces viscosus and eubacteria and what happens after these injuries major changes can be reversible or irreversible after an injury and this is mainly depends upon the duration or intensity and pathogenicity of the stimulus or the irritant which is causing the trauma and also the human or the host immune response and the second major change we can see is inflammation so mild to moderate injury lead to reversible type of inflammation and severe injury lead to pulpal necrosis and subsequent changes in the periradicular tissues coming to inflammation what is inflammation it is a physiological response of a living tissue to injury its main objective is to destroy the irritant causing the change in the tissue and to bring back to its form and function and mainly thing we can see in the inflammation is the granulation tissue and what in the inflammatory process allows or brings in brings to the area the arrival of phagocytic cells to digest the bacteria and it allows the antibody to recognize attack and destroy the foreign objects and the edema or fluid to neutralize the irritant the last one is the fibrin formation to limit the spread of inflammation coming to signs of inflammation you already heard this symptoms or signs of inflammation in your second or third year basics so this dolor which is in the form of pain it's tumor second thing pain and tumor which is in the form of swelling rubor that is the color change and redness and cala that is heat rise of temperature in that particular area and loss of function 
In the case of inflamed pulp, only pain and loss of function can be clinically appreciated because the pulp is encased within the dentin. So, dentin does not permit the pulp to swell. So, swelling we can't see here, we can see only the regner, uh, sorry, uh, pain and loss of function. The types of inflammations, the acute which is of shorter duration and chronic inflammation which is of longer duration. Coming to cells of inflammation, we have the first and major type of cell or cells that are seen in the inflammation are neutrophils. It is poly, these are polymorphonuclear neutrophils and it uh, totally compromises 70 percent of PMN cells which are seen mostly in acute inflammation and it, they release the proteolytic enzymes. Next comes the macrophages, these are phagocyte cells which ingest the cellular debris, microorganisms and particulate matter and they release enzymes like collagenases and acid hydrolases. And we have lymphocytes, these are seen mostly in chronic stage of inflammation and they relate to immune, immunological systems and there are two types B cells that is B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes, they fight against the infection. And we have eosinophils, eosinophils they constitute 6 percent of leukocytes and they are predominant cells seen in allergic reactions and parasitic infections. And basophils and mast cells this constitute 1 percent of leukocytes and this I mean both are similar type of cells. These are the different types of inflammatory cells that are seen in the site of inflammation, either it is an acute or it is a chronic. And we have some events which, that which takes place during the inflammation. First one is vascular events, second are cellular events. Under vascular events, we have hemodynamic changes and altered vascular permeability. Here this is a flow chart which clearly explains the vascular changes. First thing, first change is that is going to seen here, it is increase in vascular permeability which results in transient vasoconstriction of blood vessels, but this lasts for few seconds and this is followed by vasodilatation. This persists for day to that is one day to weeks as long as the inflammation persists and this caused by relaxation of anterior and capillary sphincters which causes increased rate of blood flow results in increased blood supply to the affected area which leads to increase in intravascular pressure that exhibits as redness and heat. And simultaneously one more act is going on along with the first act it is release of proteolytic enzymes from injured cells, bacterial toxins and traumatic cells which triggers the histamine from mast cells and this results in the contraction of endothelial cells creating gaps between them. And these gaps along with the intravascular pressure escapes the plasma fluid from, from the vessels which results in the formation of inflammatory transudate, the fluid which is less in proteins. This is overshadowed by blood plasma which contains rich plasma proteins, albumin, fibrinogen and immunoglobulins which results as inflammatory exudate. And this helps in bringing up the chemical mediatory cells along with the inflammatory cells to the site of inflammation and starts the inflammatory reaction. And this completes the vascular events. Coming to cellular events, first step is the exudation of leukocyte. So, increased blood blood flow brings the structural changes in the microvasculature. The RBCs come into center, the leukocytes move towards the vessel wall. This is called margination and leads to pavementing of the leukocytes and this is called emigration of leukocytes which causes the spread of inflammation faster in the blood pulpal tissue as it is a closed chamber leading to total necrosis of pulp. 
this migration of lymphocytes and monocytes to the inflammatory site leads to the macrophages derived by the B lymphocytes found and also found at the site. So, both these are found at the inflammatory site lymphocytes, monocytes along with the macrophages. These cells lead to starts the process called phagocytosis. The cells are attached by the, uh, by the process called opsonization and they start engulfing that is engulfment stage and the secret, secretion stage and the last one is degranulation stage. So, these are the stages in the phagocytosis among the three types of cells and this completes the cellular events that are taken place during the or at the inflammatory site. And after vascular changes, cellular changes, we have tissue changes. The degenerated changes in the pulp may be seen as fibrous, resorptive, calcific, necrosis and suppurative. And also we have the pulpal changes lead to periradicular changes. So, the periradicular manifestation is seen as the following flow chart. So, the first the inflammatory response starts in the pulp which leads to the partial or total necrosis of pulp in the root canal which becomes a pathway to periradicular area which stimulates, evokes or invokes the inflammatory and immunological reaction in the periradicular area. Due to this reaction, there will be a release of noxious products from the bacteria and from the cells and these products, noxious products causes bone resorption which is later replaced by the granulation tissue. 